Hey guys, it's phase one once again. Today we're going to go into the new Inside Star Citizen episode, Enter Perseus. And uh, I haven't seen it yet. So I wanted to wait for uh, to do this episode right here so that you guys can see my initial reaction. Um, if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you like content like this, make sure to leave a like as well. And also let me know your thoughts on what you're you're gonna see as well. So, all right, so let's get let's get started without any further ado. Okay. So this ship is really a military ship. It's about destroying other big ships. Because it's so formidable that you're in a fight and if somebody turns up with a fleet and it's stacked full of gunships, you're just gonna be like, oh damn. It's a very, very impressive ship, the Perseus. A fleet in Star Citizen is sort of built around a, a capital ship or capital ships as its core. So you have the Javelin, which is a destroyer. So that is designed for really duking it out with other big capital ships. You have the Idris, which is a carrier, so can sort of take on other big ships. It's got a big railgun on the front, but primarily it's there to deliver fighters. And then you have the Polaris, which is a long-range torpedo boat. And you have the Hammerhead, which is a great anti-fighter screen. But what we're missing is this hybrid role that sits between the Hammerhead and the Polaris that is your fleet defense ship. I knew it. I knew when the... Um when the Perseus, uh, when we heard about the Perseus and looking at the, 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 the setup of the ship, it looked like it was something in between the, uh, the Hammerhead and the Polaris. And it makes perfect sense. Um, in a fleet like that, they're saying that the core is uh, what you call the Javelin, right? I think that's what they said. And, um, and it makes sense that you, you definitely need a, a sniper type of vehicle, which is the, um, what you call it, the, um, what is this ship? This one. The Hammerhead, which is a great anti The Polaris, which is... The Polaris, right? So the Polaris is more so the sniper. Um, it, it, it can hit hard from a very very far distance but you and then the hammerhead is more so within the heat of the battle right so you needed a, a ship that would kind of sit between the hammerhead and the polaris and the perseus fits uh, in just perfectly it in a sense it what i think is it will kind of in a sense defend and keep away um any ships that are trying to get to the the polarises wow it's also hitting hard from behind the lines right so that's that's what i i feel the perseus uh the, the position of the perseus will fit in the in the heat of the battle and you have the hammerhead which is a great anti-fighter screen but what we're missing is this hybrid role that sits between the hammerhead and the polaris that is your fleet defense ship that i i kind of like this i kind of like what they're doing with this um this is really going to support org plays as well with players and i can imagine orgs actually coming out with well organized fleets with with the right in the right positions and things like that and coordination and it's it's actually exciting to see how they're designing these ships just to fit those roles right so i like i like what they're doing moderately large size and capable of dishing out firepower to to deal with large ship threats that aren't quite capital ships it has been a while since we've uh, done an RSI ship. Obviously there are some in the fleet already. And then you take all those and you fold in the functionality. When we were designing this ship, it was obviously built around the, the concept of having these large turrets. That you had a bridge on the front, but it, it sort of just felt like a, a Polaris with a turret on the top and the bottom. And for a ship of this style, having that bridge at the front didn't quite sit well with us, so we then tried alternates with a more traditional bridge, taking cues from the the Bengal, and that that definitely looked better. But then has the the knock on that the upper front turret has a blind spot behind, so we had to make sure that the rear turret could not have a blind spot there, and then deal with the point defense system turrets to help okay. eliminate those spots. The design of this ship is so well, well done, bait. It's so impressive how well designed. It seems like every ship they come out with, it keeps getting better and better 
and better and it's just amazing how they're designing the ships this is why they, they, they they're able to sell these ships right they do a very good job at designing these ships marketing these ships as well as um when it's actually in game it looks as good as what we're seeing right so it's just, it's amazing how they're doing this you want it to look like it's part of the family when you see this ship you know you're in it's a pretty family. ship that's what players are looking for it's a pretty ship so originally the brief for the ship was a real skeleton crew of four men uh, so you had the pilot the captain and the two turret gunners but as we developed the ship it sort of felt a bit odd that such a small crew was operating such a, a relatively large ship so the crew size for the ship is six man that gives you a pilot captain two manned turret guns because the s7 twin turrets are manned and then it leaves you with these two extra roles that are really flexible in terms of what you want them to do so we wanted to layer in all the functionality that john wanted but also make it easy to navigate it should be clear for the player at any point what part of the ship they're in and it's split over three decks oh that's cool that is so cool so the rover can go from the bottom all the way into the ship and it will drive all the way in that is cool that is why cool. i actually never seen that it's, it's sort of like a, a ramp an internal ramp as well as the, the the ramp that comes from comes to the outside that is cool and in it and it that is cool i like this i, I really like this so the lower deck is your cargo and access to the lower turret and then you go up and then that's sort of the main deck and that goes from front to back you know you can reach your front turret torpedo room or you can go right back into habitation and the captain's room and there's also a central lift for ease of navigation basically and then the top floor is bridge escape pods and engineering section so for a player it should all be quite uh, straightforward I think this ship really will add something to the is there a new skin that is growing within star citizen we've already seen aspects of that with the invictus launch week uh, you've seen the capital ships in game there's obviously the hammerhead in game already when this is in game you'll also have much more of a rounded fleet to play with that will provide a great threat and deterrence to to other players the RSI Perseus is the latest concept offering available now on the RobertPerseus.com website. And if you'd like to learn more, there's also a thread on Spectrum collecting questions ahead of a Q&A com link that's coming in the next few days. But up next, let's look at a small feature looking to make a big impact with the new tractor beam attachment, coming online in the upcoming Alpha 3.12. So the desire was to get tractor beams into oh the cool and it can literally pick up two. anything i thought it was just the boxes look at that objects. you don't always want to carry everything with your hands wow this is really impressive wow okay i thought it was just those boxes that we pick up manually but it seems like it's anything we wanted to add for a while now this attachment essentially is kind of graded to lift smaller objects so cargo crates and such you're able to lift them up, you're able to move them closer, you're able to move them further away. Okay. You can rotate them if you want to, to place them, you know, accurately inside your ship or otherwise. Oh, okay. Oh, so the these are gravity, literally... Oh, the higher, the thank you, thank you. These are the cargo boxes that actually go into the ships once you... Um, when you purchase cargo. So this is not the small ones that you carry too. So it can pick those up. So... I can see that them adding in possibly even in 3.12 when you kill somebody or an NPC these these large cargo boxes will be what will be left behind and now you'll need the multi tool to grab them and put it into your your ship that is cool that is cool I thought it was just a small cargo uh, boxes but it looks like it's the bigger ones too so now this is really um giving bounty giving pirates and and um even bounty hunters as well an opportunity to make some extra income because now like pirates have a reason to actually attack somebody right if they want your cargo they scan you down and they see that you have cargo they can literally kill you for your cargo now right so before they were just killing you for fun but now they have a reason to actually a legitimate reason to actually kill you that is really good that's very very impressive i like that
the environment you're in, the heavier the object becomes and the more the multi-tool might struggle. Okay, moment, you can pick up anything! To lift up to about 250 kilograms, so most of the cargo crates on your ship, it should be possible to lift up. Look at that! One of the things that we are still tuning at the moment is the, essentially the acceleration and the lag of the object that you've actually got tethered to your multi-tool. So if you pick up a soda can or whatever, something that's really, really light, you will have that more rigid beam because the beam's not struggling to pick up something so light. But if you pick up a really heavy crate that's like full of metals or something, you will start to see that lag and the beam will be more okay, likely to bend like and that. break. At the moment, what we're right sense. is work in progress, but we're working on that right now to make it feel right. Everything we show on ISC is work in progress. Jared made me say that. <laughs> Jared is probably. Oh, that is so cool. Look at that. Too, so, if you start targeting large and, uh, you know, massive objects like ships uh, that you wouldn't necessarily be able to pull with this thing because it's so small, its secondary use is more like a grapple hook almost. Oh, that's cool. I like the multiple functionality that they're adding to it. Oh, my goodness. It's the Spider Man tool. Oh. So. You know where they got this idea from? It's from, you guys remember Sadaball that they had in, um, I think, Star Citizen 2 point something. They had like a Sadaball type of thing where they show like a showcase of it like a, a couple years ago. So I guess this is what they've been working on with this. Um, this is very interesting because you can use your multi-tool to get into positions, especially when you're in EVA and um, you're... In combat in EVA, you can really get yourself quickly into certain positions to like, advantageous positions to actually take down your enemy as well. So it's uh it's interesting. This really mix mix things up when it comes to FPS combat. I'm sure there's other uses for it as well that we're not thinking of right now, but it's very very interesting. So ultimately, this is a sandbox tool. It's something that can manipulate any physics-enabled object in the game, or at least interact with it in some cool. way. Really looking forward to see how people put this to use, because uh, there's so many ways in which you can utilize it. There are. So <laughs> I can see, see. I can see players playing like a, a ping pong type of game like this, like this, like a goalkeeper. <laughs> I can see. I can see this. This turn it into a, a community event sport. <laughs> it's like it's like soccer, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness, man. I can see this happening, actually. I, I can see it happening. Really looking forward to see how people put this together. This is yeah, good, man. There's so many ways in which you can utilize it. There are some crazy things that we've seen internally at the moment, which sadly, wow. some of those things we can't allow to go out because, you know, it's going to break the game. But also there are some fun things that we've decided are okay to leave in there. So really, okay. I'm very excited to see the videos coming out online of people using this thing. Oh, there's going to be some interesting stuff fans. that people are going to find. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that between its menacing silhouette... Alright, so... The Perseus... That looks like it's the whole video. And yeah, I, I think I saw some really interesting things. You guys let me know what you guys like most in the comments below. If you liked anything in this video, leave a like as well. I'm really, really impressed with what I saw. I'm really excited for Star Citizen 3.12. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe as well. All right, I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.